So today we are going to be wrapping up our discussion involving limits. This is going to be really exciting. And today's discussion is going to be about limits involving infinity. And limits involving infinity is not going to be the limits involving infinity that we've discussed up until now, where the limit is going to be approaching a constant value. And then if you were to evaluate that limit from the right, then it would tend toward one infinity, and then it would tend toward the other infinity from the other side. This is going to be where it is that x is not going to be a fixed value. We are going to let x grow larger and larger and larger without bound. And this can be denoted as the limit as x approaches infinity for f of x. And a simple side and a little side note that I'm going to mention right over here, this is going to be this is going to become relevant later on in the video. We say that a function f of x has a horizontal asymptote asymptote at y equals the limit as x approaches infinity for f of x. And a horizontal asymptote is essentially going to be the same idea as a vertical asymptote where it's going to be a line that the function is going to get it's it's going to be a value that the function gets closer and closer to but never actually touches. So a function say something like this where say this is going to be y is equal to 5 and let's just draw a dotted line right over here. If the function were to grow but never touch y is equal to 5, then we say that we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 5. The idea behind limits as x approach infinity, say we wanted to evaluate the limit as x approached infinity for the function x plus 1. Well, for every x value that you can plug into this function, you can always plug in something that's larger, and there's nothing that's going to stop it from growing larger and larger. Very often, whenever it is that you're dealing with horizontal asymptotes, there's going to be a denominator or an exponent, something that's going to stop it from growing larger, and because of that, it's going to settle on a definite value. However, for a linear equation such as this, it's only going to grow larger and larger. You can plug in an x value which is larger than, say you plugged in 10, you could plug in 100, you could plug in a million, a billion, there's always going to be a larger value that you can plug in. So because of that, for this function, we can say that the limit as x approaches infinity is just going to be infinity. However, let's go and take a function that we are somewhat familiar with at this point. Oh, my eraser is getting messy. Say we wanted to evaluate the limit as x approaches infinity for the function 1 over x. As I had mentioned in the previous video, whenever it is that you make a denominator larger and larger and larger, the output of the function is going to grow smaller and smaller as a consequence. So say we wanted to, let's make a, a table of values over here in our head. If we wanted to plug in 10 into this function, then we would get 0.1 as an output. If we wanted to plug in 100, we would get 0.01. If we plugged in 1000, 0.001. And the, the output is always going to get smaller and smaller as the output gets larger as the input of x gets larger, then the output of the function is going to get smaller. So we say that the limit as x approaches infinity for this function right over here is going to be zero because it's tending toward and getting closer and closer to zero as the inputs rise larger and uh, the inputs grow larger and larger and larger. So this limit is equal to zero. And now we're going to be evaluating some slightly more complex polynomials. And this is where it is that your limits are actually going to settle on a definite value. So say we wanted to evaluate the limit as x approached infinity for 7x to the third plus 4x squared minus 2x plus 8 all over 2x to the third minus 5x plus 1. And we can tell right away simply by looking at this function that the limit is going to be equal to 7 over 2 using a trick that I'm going to disclose in just a moment. However, first I'm going to write out the steps as to how it is that we can evaluate these limits the old-fashioned way, the way that your teacher is going to want you to evaluate them on the test. So 
So these are the steps that you're going to need to follow in order to evaluate these limits involving infinity. As x grows larger and larger and larger, the first thing that you want to do for these functions is you want to divide each term in the function by the highest power of x in the denominator. So in this case, we would be dividing everything by x to the third because we have 2x to the third term right over here. We divide this by x to the third, 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 and everything in the denominator by exactly the same thing. Afterward, we are going to be canceling out all of the common factors, and wherever it is that we have a constant divided by any power of x, we know that that term is going to go immediately to zero. So let's go and take this problem over here and expand on it a little bit. We know that the limit is going to be equal to 7 over 2. However, let's find out why. Say we wanted to evaluate the limit as x approached infinity for this function, and we already have it written out over here. So let's start out with the first step, which is to divide everything by the highest power of x in the denominator. Highest power of x is x to the third. So we are going to take 7x to the third and divide it by x to the third. We're going to take 4x squared and divide it by x to the third. Same thing with 2x over x to the third plus 8 over x to the third. And then same thing in the denominator, 2x to the third over x to the third minus 5x over x to the third plus 1 over x to the third. Now what we can do is we can cancel out some common factors in both the numerators and the denominators for each of these. So what we can do is we can cancel this right over here. Let's restart as a new limit. Limit as x approaches infinity. These x to the thirds are going to cancel each other out. So all we're going to be left with in this case is going to be a 7. So 7 plus x squared and x to the third. This is going to leave you with 4 over x. And then minus 2x over x to the third. This is going to leave you with 2 over x squared. And then this cannot be simplified in any way, so it's going to be x, 8 over x to the third. And then in the denominator, we're going to have these two x to the thirds are going to cancel each other out. All we're going to be left with is 2. And then plus 5x, this is going to leave us with 5 over x squared. And this is exactly the same. This does not change. 1 over x to the third. And because we are letting x approach infinity in this case, the denominators are, are constantly going to grow in each of these terms. So any constant that's going to be divided by infinity, essentially, because we're letting x grow larger and larger and larger, can be crossed out completely because they're eventually going to go 10 towards 0. So this will go to 0, 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 and this will go to 0. So as x approaches infinity, all that we're going to be left with is 7 over 2. So limit as x approaches infinity for f of x is equal to 7 halves. Most of the time you can evaluate a limit in approaching infinity just by looking at the function. It's actually really simple. And it goes like this. Say we wanted to evaluate the limit as x approached infinity for a higher power of x. So we have all the rules written out right over here. If we were to evaluate a limit as x approached infinity and we had a polynomial in the numerator or the denominator, uh, actually in both the numerator and the denominator, and one had a higher power of x, the numerator had a higher power of x than in the denominator, so say this was going to be something like x to the third, and then the denominator would be x squared. x to the third is going to be higher than x squared, so we can come to the conclusion immediately that that function is going to tend towards infinity. However, say we had the opposite. We have a lower power of x in the numerator and a higher power of x in the denominator. We know that we're, this is going to tend towards zero because we're eventually going to be left with a constant divided by infinity. And in the case where it is that the limit as x approaches infinity for the same power of x, and in the case of the problem that we had just solved not too long ago, 
where it is that we have the same power of x. So the previous problem that we just solved, both of them were both x to the third power. In that case, we would be looking at the leading coefficients of each of the polynomials. So in the case of the previous function, in the case of the previous function, we had 7x to the third over 2x to the third. So immediately we can cross out those x to the thirds and come to the conclusion that the limit was 7 over 2. By cancelling out the highest power and simply looking at their leading coefficients, we can tell the limit as x approaches infinity immediately. So let's get on with a couple of practice problems. We're going to do them the old-fashioned way, and then later on we're going to simply look at them and inspect them. Right away we can tell the limit as x approaches infinity. So the first problem that we've got is going to be the limit as x approaches infinity for x squared minus 5x plus 1 over x to the third plus 3x. Now we got to remember our steps, which is basically to divide by the largest power in the denominator. So we're going to divide each of our terms, limit as x approaches infinity for x squared over x to the third, minus 5x over x to the third, plus 1 over x to the third, all over x to the third over x to the third, plus 3x over x to the third. This is going to leave us with, well, if we did all of our cancellations, limit as x approaches infinity for, these are going to leave us with 1 over x minus x with x to the third. This is going to leave us with 5 over x squared. And then plus 1 over x to the third is not going to change. And then in the denominator, we're going to have 1 plus, and then 3x over x to the third is basically like 3 over x squared. So we can let x approach infinity and we're going to make all of these constants go straight to zero whenever it is that they're divided by any power of x. So this is going to be divided by infinity, goes to zero, this goes to zero, this goes to zero, and this is going to go to zero. So our final answer is going to be zero over one, which is equal to zero. And we can tell this right away simply by looking at the problem because we have the higher power which is going to be in the denominator. Whenever the higher power is in the denominator, we can tell that the function is going to go straight to zero because you're going to have constants left over divided by infinity. Next problem. Say we wanted to evaluate the limit as x approached infinity for x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 3 over x to the third plus 8. Well, just as we did in the previous case, there's not really much you can do when it comes to these problems other than multiplying by the conjugate is something that we'll, in we'll involve in the next few problems. The limit as x approaches infinity, we are going to divide by the highest power in the denominator, which in this case is going to be x to the third. So we're going to have x to the fourth over x to the third minus 2x squared over x to the third plus 3 over x to the third all over x to the third over x to the third plus 8 over x to the third. This can be further simplified as the limit as x approaches infinity for this is going to leave us with just an x minus this is going to leave us with a 2 over x and this is going to leave us with a plus 3 over x to the third. And then in the denominator this is going to go straight to 1 plus and then 8 over x to the third. So as we let x approach infinity this is going to grow larger and larger, and therefore this is going to head towards zero, this is going to head towards zero, and this is going to head towards zero. However, in this case, we have an x remaining in the numerator. 
So that means that this x is going to continue to grow larger and larger and larger, and all it's going to be divided by is 1, and that 1 is not going to slow it down. So we can come to the conclusion that the limit as x approaches infinity for this function is infinity. It's going to keep growing larger and larger because there's nothing that's going to be slowing it down. And we can tell this right away by looking at the leading coefficient of the higher power, where it is that in the numerator we have an x to the fourth, and in the denominator we have an x to the third. And because the numerator has a higher power, we know right away that this limit is going to tend toward infinity. So say we wanted to evaluate the limit as x approached infinity for 3x to the third plus 4x plus 1 over 2x to the third minus 1. Same process all the time, just divide by the highest power of x in the denominator. So we are going to be taking the limit as x approaches infinity for 3x to the third divided by x to the third plus 4x over x to the third plus 1 over x to the third all divided by 2x to the third over x to the third minus 1 over x to the third. We can simplify this and cancel out all of the common factors. We are going to be left with the limit as x approaches infinity for this is going to leave us, actually let's start with the numerator. We're going to be left with 3 plus and then 4 over x squared plus 1 over x to the third over 2 minus 1 over x to the third. And we are going to let x approach infinity as we normally do and the larger and larger x grows, well, these constants are going to be diminished to pretty much nothing. So these are going to head towards 0, and our limit as x approaches infinity is just 3 over 2. And we can tell that simply by looking at the problem because both of them are to the same power of x, they are both x to the power of 3, so all we need to do is look at the leading coefficient of each of the higher powers. So 3x to the third and 2x to the third, 3 divided by 2 is going to be our limit. Say we wanted to evaluate the limit as x approached infinity for the square root of x squared plus 1 minus x. But we don't know which infinity is going to win in this case. Is this going to grow larger or is this going to make it tend toward negative infinity? We don't know yet. So what we can do in this case is we can multiply by the conjugate of this problem over here, multiply it by the square root of x squared plus 1, and this negative sign is going to become a plus instead in both the numerator and the denominator. x squared plus 1 plus x. This is going to leave us with the limit as x approaches infinity for x squared plus 1 minus x squared which is simply just going to be 1, and then 1 over the square root of x squared plus 1 plus x. So let's go and erase out these x squareds over here. This is going to be simplified to just 1 over this mess right over here. And we know that if we were to divide everything by the largest power of x in the denominator, well, the largest power of x in the denominator is going to be equal to x, whether you, whether you were to take the square root of x squared, because you need to be very, very careful when it comes to square roots in the denominator and dividing by the highest power. Because here we have x squared, but it's also trapped within a square root, so what we need to consider is what would the power of x be without the square root? And in this case, x squared in square root it would be just an x. So we need to divide everything by x. So we were to take the limit as x approaches infinity for 1 over x over the square root of and square root of x squared over, if we wanted to contain it within the square root, we would divide it by x squared plus 1 over x squared. Let's just extend this square root sign a little bit, and then plus x over x. This is going to leave, and this is going to tend towards 1, 
So say we wanted to evaluate the limit as x approached infinity. This is going to go straight to 0. This is going to go straight to 0. This is going to go to 1. This is going to go straight to 0. And this is going to go straight to 1. So immediately we can come to the conclusion that we're going to have 0 over the square root of 1 plus 1 which 0 divided by anything is still going to be 0. So our limit is 0. Say we wanted to evaluate this following limit. We want to evaluate the limit as x approaches infinity for 1 minus x squared over x to the third minus x plus 1. If we wanted to do this the old-fashioned way, we can simply divide by the highest power in the denominator, where we're going to take the limit as x approaches infinity for 1 over x to the third minus x squared over x to the third over x to the third over x to the third minus x over x to the third plus 1 over x to the third and we can cancel out all of the common factors, so we can write, rewrite this limit as the limit as x approached infinity for 1 over x to the third minus 1 over x, because these x's are going to cancel each other out. This is going to go straight to 1, 1 minus 1 over x squared, and this is going to be 1 over x to the third. This does not change. And as we let x approach infinity, each of these factors that are going to be, uh, each of these factors that have a constant divided by x are going to go straight to zero. So this is going to go to zero, 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 and this requires no more work because we know that there's going to be a zero in the numerator. Immediately anything divided by, uh, zero divided by anything is going to give us zero. So we can come to the conclusion that the limit as x approaches infinity is equal to zero. And we can tell that right away simply by looking at the highest power in the numerator and the denominator. The denominator has an x to the third and the numerator has an x squared. And because of that, well, higher power in the denominator, we know that we're going to be dividing a constant by infinity. And because of that, we know that it's going to tend towards zero. So say we wanted to evaluate this following limit, which is the limit as x approaches infinity for 9x squared plus x minus 3x. And here we're going to have a subtraction of infinity, so we need to decide whether it's going to uh, settle on a finite value or it's going to tend toward positive infinity, negative infinity, zero, whatever it may be. What we're going to be doing in this case is here we have a subtraction, so we can multiply by the conjugate in both the numerator and the denominator, and that's going to give us something that we can actually work with. So we're going to have 9x squared plus x plus 3x over the square root of 9x squared plus x plus 3x. And this is going to distribute very nicely. So say we want to take the limit as x approaches infinity for 9x squared plus x. This is going to be distributed and this is going to become 9x squared plus x and then this is going to be negative 3x squared uh, times po this is going to be negative 3x multiplied by 3x. This is going to leave us with negative 9x squared. So the 9x squareds are going to cancel each other out. And all we're going to be left with is this x term right over here. So we're going to have x in the numerator. And we're going to have the square root of 9x squared plus x plus 3x. Now we're going to look at the highest power in the denominator. And that is going to be x. Because here we have the square root of 9x squared. So if we wanted to take the square root of an x squared term, that would simply leave us with a one power of x. So if we wanted to divide this entire thing by the highest power in the denominator, take the limit as x approaches infinity for x divided by x over, and then within the square root, we're going to be dividing by x squared. So this is going to be 9x squared divided by x squared plus x over x squared and then plus 3x over x. So what we're going to be doing in this case is we're going to be canceling out all of the common factors. So take the limit as x approaches infinity for this x over x is just going to go to 1. 
this is going to go straight to 1. This square root term is going to go to the square root of 9. Square root of 9 plus, and then we have x divided by x squared is simply going to be 1 over x. And then we're going to have 3x over x, which is simply going to go to 3. These x's are going to cancel each other out. So the limit as x approaches infinity for this function over here can easily be evaluated because we know that this is going to go straight to 0. So the limit as x approaches infinity is simply going to be 1 over the square root of 9 plus 3, which is just 1 sixth. So the limit as x approaches infinity for that function is 1 sixth. And we can tell right away simply by looking at the highest power in the numerator and the denominator Look at their coefficients, and you can tell right away that it's going to be 1 sixth. Take the limit as x approaches negative infinity, as opposed to positive infinity, of, uh, where'd it go? I lost it. 1 plus x to the sixth divided by x to the fourth plus 1. Now the process is not going to change over here. We're still going to be dividing by the highest power in the denominator. The fact that we're going to negative infinity doesn't really change anything. Whether it's an extremely large number that you're dividing by in the negative direction or the positive direction, constants divided by an infinity, whether it is positive or negative, are still going to tend towards zero. So we have x to the fourth is going to be the highest power in the denominator. So take the limit as x approaches negative infinity for 1 over x to the 4th plus x to the 6th divided by x to the 4th over x to the 4th divided by x to the 4th plus 1 over x to the 4th. We can cancel out some common factors now. I'm going to take the limit as x approaches negative infinity for 1 over x to the 4th is going to go straight to 0. This is going to be x squared, so 1 plus x squared. Uh, this is going to leave us with simply 1, and this is going to leave us with 1 over x to the 4th. So we know that this constant, because it's being divided by negative infinity, this is going to go straight to 0. This is also going to go straight to 0, and all we're going to be left with is going to be x squared in the numerator, but because x is going to be approaching negative infinity, it's going to be a negative value that we're going to be plugging in. However, because we're going to be squaring that same negative value, it's going to become positive. Whenever you multiply a negative by a negative, it's going to become a positive. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity for this function is going to be negative infinity squared. If you want to look at infinity as a number, it's going to be positive infinity divided by 1, which is just positive infinity. Limit as x approaches infinity for x minus the square root of x. And we can tell right away that this is probably going to tend towards infinity because this is going to be growing at a much larger rate than the square root of whatever it is that you're going to be subtracting off. But let's go ahead and prove it anyway. If we want to take the limit as x approached positive infinity, let's go and multiply by the conjugate as we have done in previous problems where we're going to be taking x plus the square root of x over x plus the square root of x. This is going to distribute. We're going to be left with the limit as x approaches infinity for x squared minus x over x plus the square root of x. And this is going to be one of those simple cases where you can simply look at the highest power in the numerator or the denominator, uh, highest power in the numerator and the denominator. If they match, look at their coefficients and that's going to give you the limit. If they don't match, then it's either going to tend toward infinity or zero, depending on where it is that the highest power lies. So the highest power in the numerator is going to be x squared, and the highest power in the denominator is equal to 1. So right away, we know that there's going to be a higher power in the numerator than in the denominator. Right away, we can jump to the conclusion that the limit as x approaches infinity is going to be infinity. Say we wanted to evaluate the limit as x approached infinity for 2x squared plus 1 squared over x minus 1 squared 
times x squared plus x. Now I'm going to distribute this, and it's going to be rather annoying, but let's evaluate the limit as x approaches infinity for this function. We're going to try to distribute both the numerator and the denominator first off. So if we were to square 2x squared plus 1, then it would give us 4x to the fourth, 4x to the fourth plus 4x squared plus 1. Now if we were to go and square the denominator, this part is going to leave us with x squared minus 2x plus 1 multiplied by x squared plus x. We can distribute this even further and say the limit as x approaches infinity for 4x to the fourth plus 4x squared plus 1 over, and then we're going to distribute this so that it's going to come to x squared, but this is going to become x to the fourth. This is going to be, become x to the third plus x to the third minus, uh, minus 2x to the third, minus 2x to the third, minus 2x squared, plus x squared, and then plus x. So this is going to be, let's go and simplify this a little bit. So we're going to have x to the third, minus 2x to the third, that's just going to be a negative x to the third. So x to the fourth, minus x to the third. Negative 2x squared plus x squared is going to leave us with negative x squared. Negative x squared, and then we're going to be left with a positive x at the end. So just as we would look at any other problem, we can either divide by the highest power in the denominator, if you're looking to go the old-fashioned way. However, let's just take a look at the coefficients of the highest powers. We know that the coefficient, uh, we know that the highest powers are x to the fourth in both the numerator and the denominator. So we can simply come to the conclusion that the limit as x approaches infinity for this function is going to be a division of the coefficients of the highest powers. The highest power in the numerator is four. The highest power in the, the coefficient of the highest power in the numerator is four, and the coefficient of the highest power in the denominator is equal to one. So, right away, we can come to the conclusion that our limit is 4 over 1, or just 4. That's going to be the limit as x approaches infinity for that function. So, we got two more questions. These are going to be relatively simple. And it's going to be asking for horizontal and vertical asymptotes of certain functions, which is going to be needed later on for function graphing, which is going to be after you learn the concepts of derivatives and all that fun stuff. Say we have the function f of x is equal to 2x squared plus x minus 1. And then we have x squared plus x minus 2. Let's find the vertical asymptotes first. Vertical asymptotes, as we had discussed in the previous video discussing vertical asymptotes, is where it is that the function fails to be defined because of a zero in the denominator. So what we're going to do is look for two values that are going to give you a sum of positive 1 and a product of negative 2, and that's going to tell us which values are going to make the denominator equal to zero. So sum positive 1, product of negative 2, uh, Positive two and positive two and negative one work. So we're gonna x plus two and x minus one over uh, under rather two x squared plus x minus one. Now we can set each of these equations equal to zero. So we know that this function is going to go to is rather it's, it's going to yield a zero denominator whenever it is that you plug in x is equal to negative two or x is equal to positive one. So we have a vertical asymptote at x is equal to negative two and at x is equal to positive one. And the next problem, vertical asymptote, right? And the next problem is going to be asking us to solve for the horizontal asymptote, 
which is basically what it is that we've been doing this entire time by evaluating limits that where x approaches infinity. We're going to be evaluating the limit as x approaches infinity for this function. The limit as x approaches infinity for 2x squared plus x minus 1 over x squared plus x minus 2. And we can come to the conclusion right away that because we see an x squared in both the numerator and the denominator, they are the highest powers present, that we can do simply a, a quotient of the coefficients of the highest powers. The highest power is going to be x squared over here. It's led by a coefficient of 2, and x squared in the denominator led by a coefficient of 1. So we can say that the limit as x approaches infinity in this case is going to be equal to 2. So we're going to say that we have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 2. So we have h a at y is equal to 2. And our vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 1.